in the previous slides, my explanation started drifting from something that is, uh, in a way, abstract math to something that is a little bit more applied. I started talking about equilibrium, I started to talk about time, uh, saturation, approximation, convergence, and I also used every now and then, just by mistake, the word input and output. So I can regard this differential equation, for instance, so let me actually choose a equals minus 1, just for the sake of, uh, of simplicity for the example, and look at this as a kind of black box, as a kind of dynamical system, where the input is the non-homogeneous term that, he, that here is, would be added uh, uh, to the right-hand side of the equation, and the output is the solution itself. And the initial condition takes the meaning of the state of the system at some time. So let me try to show you with this spirit what would be the solution of this black box, this physical system, when this is the initial condition, so say that this is time, and this is time zero for f zero, this will be one, this is the initial condition. We know that the solution is an exponential and uh, the particular solution here, so the specific solution here is the exponential of minus t with the uh, uh, identify constant equals to 1. And if I, in a way, start to, say, simulate it, I will see that the response of the system is reaching 0 very quickly. So I'm doing nothing more than plotting the solution. But if I imagine that what I'm showing you here is a kind of oscilloscope, is a kind of a real-time probing of a physical system, here I see, or I can interpret the system as if it is uh, somehow starting from a charged uh, point, a charged behavior, and then automatically, spontaneously, it's actually discharging, it's actually relaxing, relaxing to a steady state. Here the steady state is zero. And this is in the case where no external input is. So if the input is missing, the output is only reminiscent of maybe some kind of memory of the past by this kind of charge that remain in the system. Let me now look at the same system, but in a slightly different way. So I'm considering a so-called piecewise constant uh, um, input. So the input is, say, zero until one point in time, which is represented by this uh, dashed line. And then after that, I will switch on something. Some input will arrive. It was zero, and it will change abruptly. And by the way, here I'm just trying to mimic the same condition by having the input up to this point basically zero. There is nothing added here. Let me run the video and show it to you. So this is this kind of transient. The so-called response, uh, the autonomous response, the spontaneous response. And then there will be, as soon as the input is uh, going to, in a moment, I will make some external input appear. So it will change, it will flip from something that was zero to something that was non-zero, like in this case, you will see that the output will respond to this forcing term in the input accordingly. So before commenting on which is the input and which is the output, let me plot the input. It has been zero until a moment that I called uh, t on, where the input or the amplitude becomes non-zero, like as if I'm switching on something. And mathematically, here it's represented by a heavy side step function. But let me show you what it means for this kind of simulation. The output, this is the solution, is responding in real time, somehow, to the input, well, with some kind of blur behavior, with some kind of smoothing behavior, which is a term that we already encountered. So please keep it in mind, it will get uh, handy in a moment. Of course, now we know how to deal with this, because yes, we don't know yet how to deal with a function like the step function, but if we consider time as uh, before t on and after t on, we are able to look at the, uh, this condition very easily. Before it's an homogeneous equation, after it's uh, an equation in which the external input or the inhomogeneous uh, term is a constant, is in this case is 1.5. So provided that we use the appropriate initial condition, this one for the first half of the example, and this one, zero, so f of t on equals to zero, which is a kind of new initial condition feeding 
to the next differential equation that we are examining. So it's called piecewise constant. So it's constant, but at some point, the, cons the value of the constant changes. So the value of the uh, constant input is changing from 0 to 1.5. We can write analytically the uh, solution of these equations, which is indicated in the bottom. And you will see that there is a sum of two terms. One is the exponential that is decaying, and then the other one is another exponential because you see here the arch of the exponential, and it's related to the forcing term. If the, there was no input, then there would be no output. In this spirit of looking at these differential equations as dynamical systems, as real physical systems or even biological systems, let me consider one case which is very relevant. So I'm considering once more uh, the state of the system to be previously charged, and I wait a little bit until a moment that I call T on, where I switch on an external input, so that I allow the system to relax, to discharge, to go to, a, to some kind of steady state. And then the input in this case, it's going to be an impulse. So the impulse will occur abruptly, and then it will leave uh, the, uh, the term here, the inhomogeneous term, being zero, because it was zero before T on, and it will be zero after T on. And what you see here, which is discharging further, it's an arch of exponential, it's a sudden rise, and then an exponential decay. This is the so-called response to an impulse. I don't want to prove it mathematically, but this response to the impulse is related, is exactly coincident to the solution of the system of the homogeneous equation. So when there is no external input. So it's very important. We will see in a moment why this is so important. So in this particular case, the full solution is this uh, first term where the system is discharging. So once more is the uh, solution of the homogeneous associated to the ordinary differential equation above. And then, assist, uh, then an equation that depends, sorry, a solution that depends on the forcing term. And you will see that I, I used the uh, step function, the Heaviside step function, to characterize that, yes, it's an exponential, but before, prior to t on, there is nothing. It has to be zero. So it's not enough to write 1.5 exponential of minus t minus t on. You have to specify by this multiplication that whatever was before is zero. In other words, this is the graphical representation, and it makes, I hope, sense. There is a sudden increase in the input, and the system is responding and then discharging again. This is the mathematical formal way to describe the solution that, say, for free, or maybe not for free for some of you, will be a, you will be able to link symbols and functions to the actual underlining uh, derivations. Let me be more specific here, extending on what I mentioned a moment ago in a more intuitive way. So here I'm stressing the fact that once the external input is a Dirac delta, for instance centered in x on, the output is a specific function which is called response to the impulse, which is coincident to the, if you want, with, uh, with the exception of the initial condition that here is missing, to the inner if you want, kernel of the solution of the homogeneous exponential a times x minus x on. So this is shifted because the impulse was shifted, uh, rigidly shifted and centered in x on. It will become clear that once you know the response to the impulse, and in a way it's enough to know the, uh, the solution of the homogeneous equation associated, you can predict analytically the solution to any external input, so to any external non-homogeneous term that is added here. This is the proof that this response to the impulse is precisely a solution of this equation once you plug h of x to the, the left-hand side and right-hand side. I will leave it here, but I will not comment. I suspect that you are probably willing to take a pen and a paper, and I invite you to do that, and try yourself. This is a product of two functions, and you know how to take derivative by now of a product. It's a product of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. And you already know how to deal with this, and here is the sum of the two terms. And if you, if you look at what you have here, you will, for instance, immediately verify that this h of x, this response to the impulse, 
is precisely a solution is satisfying uh, uh, the um, solution of uh, to of that uh, of that equation. And here, by just rearranging slightly this expression, you can verify that uh, it precisely matches the right hand side of this equation. Why is it that? Because here the exponential is multiplying a direct delta, so the direct delta is zero everywhere. So here the only value that makes sense that is worth saving, because for any other practical purpose it's going to be killed by this embrace, is the one corresponding to the point where x is equal to x on. And this point is making here the exponent being zero and the exponential of zero is one. So here it's just surviving one and it's completely equivalent and matching the right hand side of the ordinary differential equation. Now you're ready to see and understand, I hope, in a deep way how the particular solution in the most general case where this non-homogeneous term here is arbitrary. u of t can be an arbitrary function and here for the sake of simplicity I'm multiplying it by a step function suggesting that there is a time t on when I switch on the external input. But the external input can be constant, can be a sinusoid, can be anything. And I don't, I don't make any hypothesis on this. So the solution will be the sum of two terms. If you want the term that I told you it's a kind of autonomic, autonomous response of the system in the lack of, external, of, a, of an external drive, perhaps reminiscent of some memory that is uh, captured by the initial condition, plus the particular integral. So the specific solution, which is related to the specific uh, non-homogeneous term. And in, um, in, in the module one, a few videos ago, you should remember the concept of continuous sampling of a function. At that moment, it started like this. I can express a given function as the convolution of that function with a single Dirac delta. At that moment, it seems to be irrelevant, although I think I stressed enough that there was a correspondence between a summation of individual Dirac deltas, each with its, with its own uh, coefficient, and the integral in which this summation is gone to the continuous case, so it basically involves a continuum of Dirac delta and coefficients. So here are the coefficients and here are the generic Dirac delta, which is centered in the point t, where with uh, tau being the uh, integration variable. Now, if you consider this in the spirit of the principle of superposition of the effects, it seems that we know which is the response to an impulse. And here we are basically saying the external input is a superposition of impulses. Well, I know the response to an impulse, so I know the solution if the if the input is, a, is, a, is an impulse. So the solution in the general case, it's going to be a combination, a summation of responses to the input, which, to the pulse, which I called H. So here I'm writing just directly by exploiting that uh, fact that the particular integral, so the, this specific solution, which is once more, I repeat it, it's associated to the uh, inhomogeneous term here, is known with the knowledge of the impulse response, h of t, which is centered in t, and it's basically convolved by the uh, external term. This is nothing else than the superposition of the effect, and yes, I apologize, here there is no summation, it's an integral, because it captures, in the most accurate way, the external input as a series of Dirac deltas. To make it short, the particular solution of this dynamical system, if you want, of this non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation, is the convolution of the input, or the non-homogeneous term, by the, by the impulse response, h of t. Let me summarize at this point what we covered in this last video. I told you and I built on the knowledge on the homogeneous case. Ordinary differential equation of the first order with constant coefficient and without any external driving term. And I also, besides providing you with the, with the solution, I also mentioned one technique 
so that you are, if you're not, say, a believer, if you want to understand why things are coming out, then now you know how. The separate, by the method of separation of variables, stretching a little bit the notation of derivative as a ratio, I suggested a way by simply dividing and multiplying both sides of the equation by, uh, in, in such a way that I can separate variables, how to, to derive the uh, solution. And then I approach the more complicated inhomogeneous case. It's more complicated because it's more general. And I started very easy. Uh, first, I started looking at the uh, inhomogeneous terms being a constant. But then I was really tempted of presenting uh, just the principles, which, are, which is underlining the linearity of these equations, so the principle of superposition of defects. And I slowly built on this knowledge. First, looking at the Heaviside step, heavy side step function, which is, if you want, is also related to the Dirac delta. And I built the knowledge on the response to a step and a response to an impulse, and particularly the response to an impulse in the concept of the sampling, the continuous case of a sampling of a function, became immediately relevant for predicting how an arbitrary monomogeneous terms results in a solution, in a particular integral, in a particular solution. And in the meantime, I also introduced a new function, which is the heavy side step function, and also the concept of equilibrium or steady state, and the convergence to it. And this idea of uh, taking the left hand side of an ordinary differential equation, df over dt, and putting it to zero will be used over and over just to get an immediate insight into the steady state solutions of, the, uh, of any uh, ordinary differential equation.